outside of Red Hat. So it was originally written by um, uh, Dominique. Dominique's last name. I can't remember his surname, but uh, he is, uh, uh, he's a CEA in France, the uh, Atomic Energy Commission. Uh, he's the original author, and uh, other, other people, IBM, has picked it up and run it, IBM ships it. It looks like the, the, the atomic thing, uh, looks like a place where you would use something faster. Yeah. Well, he originally wrote it, they, their big users of Plan 9 and uh, 9P, and he needed a modern server for oh, sure. Did you, people at do you have this? Yeah. That's for saving I'll, my I'll life. Talk about the that's that's for saving me. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Uh, it is late in the day. I, I recognize that. I also know from personal experience that I have a speaking voice that puts people to sleep. <laughs> so um, take a deep breath, get some oxygen going, and uh, I will try to uh, not put you to sleep. I'm going to talk about NFS Ganesha, NFS Ganesha, if I say that right, um, pronounce it correctly. The uh, NFS Ganesha is an NFS v4 server. It, actually, it's a lot more than that. If I can. So the, the outline of my talk is, I'm, first I'm going to explain what NFS Ganesha is, because probably not very many people have heard about it so far. I'll tell you, uh, after I talk a little bit about what it is and how it works, I'll talk about what the current state of shipping, what we're currently shipping in Red Hat cluster storage and Fedora, and RHEL, and EPEL, and uh, the storage SIG, and so on. I'll tell you what's coming in the next releases uh, that are being worked on right now. And finally, I'll do a demo. And based on Luis's experience, I've actually recorded my demo. So I will just play the recording and pretend that I'm, I'm typing. And the next, that, actually, that way, you won't have to watch me fat finger all my typing. Uh, my, um, yeah, so let's move on. So NFS Ganesha is a user space NFS server. A lot of people kind of react to that. Uh, historically, we've even seen people react to Gluster um, and say a, a file server and user space. Doesn't that, isn't that performance really bad? And um, so let me just head that off at the pass, if I can use uh, an Americanism. Uh, you know, the cowboys and the Indians are coming, and we want to we want to head them off at the pass. Uh, the performance is quite good. It's not as good as kernel NFS, but it's it's quite good. But there's other reasons why people ask, and there's and the the answers are are many. Um, one, it has a much faster development cycle. We have a very small community. We have a very small development team. We can get stuff done fast. I've seen, I've watched the Linux kernel development for many, many years. I was uh, using open source operating systems back in 1993 when Linux started shipping the first versions of Linux. And, um, and we, know, we all know what the kernel development cycle is. Getting, getting patches reviewed and accepted upstre upstream in the kernel can be a very daunting process. We have a much lighter weight process. Just developing outside in user space is much faster, much lighter weight, uh, much faster development cycle. When things crash, we all know it's easier to, de to uh, debug user space programs. I don't think there's, if somebody wants to disagree with me, raise your hand and uh, we'll, <laughs> we can arm wrestle 
out in the corridor later. Um, one thing that's definitely true, Ganesha in user space is easier to scale out. Now, when the difference, in case anybody's unclear about the difference between scale up and scale out, is when we talk about scale up, we talk about a single box, and we put more disks in it, or we put more network cards in it, or we put more CPU or more RAM, and there's only so much you can put in a box. Eventually, you're going to run out of room to add things to your box. And then you're done. You've scaled up as far as you can go, and that's as much as you're going to get out of that box. When we talk about scale out, we're talking about adding more machines, 2, 4, 8, 16, and beyond. Um, and then, of course, in each of those boxes, you can, put, you can scale those boxes up. But by scaling out, we have the ability to add many, many more resources than you could possibly do if you're limited to a single box. And when we talk about kernel NFS, uh, to, to export a volume or a set of volumes, it, it becomes very difficult to scale out with the current, uh, the current kernel NFS servers. Um, it's easier to access other servers. So w things like uh, Kerberos authentication, LDAP, we jump through some real hoops. I work uh, indirectly with Steve Dixon, who's in Westford, and the rest of the NFS team. And when we talk about we have to run LDAP servers and we have to run Curb5 um, uh, agents, and then we have to have all this copying of things up and down, back and forth between kernel space and user space. So the, and it gets racy, and there, there are genuine issues with how complicated it is to interface with these other services. Just, it becomes a much, 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 much less of an issue when we're all running in user space. It's very easy to talk to these external agents. And it's easier to integrate with um, Gluster, things like Gluster and Ceph. Um, and I'll talk more about that. I'll, I'll show you more about that in a minute. And uh, Ganesha, Ganesha, NFS Ganesha, is uh, in a lot of ways analogous to what the Samba server is. And we don't ever hear anybody, well, Michael and Gunter might disagree with me, nobody ever says, hey, we should put Samba in the kernel. And in, the, in that regard, we, we, we apply the same logic and we say, why do, there's no reason to put Ganesha in the kernel. We do have a kernel NFS, but like I said, we have these, uh, these issues. And, the, and one of the ways that, that we inter interface with things like um, ClusterFS and Ceph is we have this notion, which I'll, I'll show you in a minute, of something called a FASAL. If you've been watching Samba for any amount of time, you know Samba, the Samba implementation has something they call a VFS, their virtual file system layer. And this lets Samba talk to any kind of back-end back -end storage besides the local disk. Ganesha has the same thing. We call it a FASAL, a file system abstraction layer. And this is a plug-in uh, architecture that lets us write uh, uh, bindings to other things that aren't just a POSIX file system underneath. And I'll, I'll show you that more about that in a minute. Am I talking too fast? Just right? Okay. Um, so here's, here's a block diagram of what the Ganesha server looks like. So we've got, um, I stole this slide from a colleague. We've got a, a network four channel. This is just the NFS you know, listening on, on the network for NFS protocol. We get the RPCs. This is um, Sun RPC. We dispatch it. It goes down through the, uh, the different layers of depending on which protocol we're talking, um, through a cache inode layer, and then into the FASAL. And the FASAL, in our case, the FASAL Gluster, knows how to talk um, the Gluster protocol. And this actually gives me a, a teeny little entree for a second about three presentations ago in this room. Um, now I'm going to draw a blank on his name. I had it momentarily. Uh, Ra uh, Vladis, Ra Vladis Rav, I don't know who said, oh, well, if NFS is a file system and all these other things like Gluster, they're, pro they're, they're not file systems. And um, I'm an old protocol guy going back to uh, X, X protocol and some other things. I would say that all these things, Gluster, Gluster we have a protocol. Uh, uh, SMB is a protocol. 
Uh, these are all things that look like file systems. NFS, despite the name, NFS is a wire protocol, and you can use the wire protocol to implement things that look kind of like file systems, but they're not, it's not a file system. And um, uh, Gluster is not a file system, SMB is not a file system, and NFS is not a file system. I, I hope I'm, I don't want to be too contentious with that, with that presenter, but that's just... Uh, of those three, I'd say Gluster is the closest to the file system. Yeah, it's it, well, it's cl because we have a fuse bridge that talks through the kernel, through, through the kernel VFS to fuse, and then we turned it into a wire, wire protocol to talk to the Gluster servers. Um, so we, we, we fake it. Um, okay, so features that are in Ganesha, we're, we're, a, proto uh, we're a protocol compliant. We, we try to be precisely protocol compliant with the published RFCs. We have NFS v3, we have NFS v4, we have NFS v4.1, we even have PNFS. Uh, the things that are in 4.2, they're coming no, soon, but they're not there yet. Um, some of you are thinking, oh, well, you're, if, you're, if you're already using Gluster, you know we've already got an NFS server in Gluster. That server is only NFS v3, and um, I'll say more about that in, a, in, a, in another slide. Uh, as I showed you in the block diagram, we have a, a, a pluggable file system abstraction layer. There are, there are many others besides just Gluster. The, the one most people will use, and I'll show you in the demo, is, uh, is called the, XF, the Fasal XFS. This just talks to a local file system on the back end. We have Gluster, there's a CephFS, uh, IBM ships a GPFS, there's a proxy Fasal that you can use to, uh, to proxy NFS and aggregate. You can even actually aggregate multiple NFS servers into a single namespace with the proxy. Uh, uh, Ganesha uses Dbus. You can control uh, di uh, exports dynamically. You can export and unexport with a simple Dbus command. Uh, it's as much mo uh, Ganesha will use as much memory as you want to throw at it. It can have huge uh, metadata and data caches. Um, I, I said better security and auth. Well, that's kind of a, a little lie because it's not really any better or worse than kernel NFS, um, but we have, you know, we have all the same auth that you can do with kernel NFS. So LDAP, Kerberos, all of those things. Um, and as I was alluding to earlier, we have uh, simpler, simpler access. That's, we have a very active community. Uh, the, auth, the original author is uh, Dominique, whose surname I forget. He's at uh, the French Atomic Energy Commission, CEA. <coughs> Uh, IBM are actively involved, uh, and of course, uh, here at Red Hat, we have uh, four, six, seven plus active developers. Um, so, so that's Ganesha all by itself. Uh, we're doing things in, Glust in the Gluster space specifically to enhance what uh, Ganesha does. So. One of the big things we've done is we've we've built uh, into the uh, into up, both upstream and the downstream product is uh, highly available clustered NFS. So uh, if you deploy a cluster of Ganesha servers, let's say four, each of those four servers has one or more virtual IPs. Any uh, with that, we can eliminate any single point of failure. We have uh, we're we're doing active active. So if you're not familiar. With, sure you're probably familiar with the difference between active passive and active active but if you're not let me just briefly say in a, in a cluster say with four servers we've got uh, f with four nodes we've got four Ganesha servers they're all actively used to serve NFS if any one of them fails we move the virtual IP to another machine and the three surviving machines carry on and continue to serve all the clients seamlessly and uh, without uh, most clients won't even notice that one of the servers has died. We use Pacemaker and Corusync to do this. These are actively developed. This is an actively developed high availability technology that uh, Red Hat ships and is available in Fedora and CentOS and uh, a number of other 
a number of other uh, op uh, Linux distributions. So we've eliminated uh, one, of the thing, one of the things we've accomplished by doing this is we've eliminated the single point of failure. So in a, in a single scale up NFS server, if that machine dies or <coughs> some, any of the processes dies, you have a single point of failure, you're dead in the water until you can get that machine back online. With clustered, uh, with clustered NFS using Ganesha, there's no, we've eliminated a single point of failure. Um, we manage the shared state of the volume with Dbus and NFS, NFS Grace. Uh, we do things, when, when we do a failover, we do things like migrate the locks from the failed server over to the other servers. So this is part of the whole seamless, uh, invisible failover that you get. Um, uh, if, if, a, if an application on a client uh, had locks. Those locks get migrated to the surviving machines, and the locks the lock state is, uh, bleh, is preserved across the cluster. Uh, the locks the locks are uh, basically they're reclaimed by the surviving servers. Uh, we have uh, functionality that we're building into Gluster right now. There's some preliminary stuff in the current versions called upcall, and we can do things like uh, invalidate invalidate uh, caches on the clients cluster-wide across all the nodes. So uh, some of the, the sort of um, strange behavior you see sometimes, like if you delete a file on one server and, uh, or on one client and another client is talking to, the other, to another server, the, um, you know, if, that, if that cache hasn't been invalidated across the whole cluster, Another client talking to another server might think that file is, still exists when it's really been deleted. So we use we use Gluster's upcall between all of these all the Ganesha servers, and we get a you get a much better consistent state across the whole across the whole cluster. Uh, we're getting we have um, cluster wide lease, which is uh, lease locks, which is uh, basically a short term uh, locking mechanism that times out in. SMB, we call this op locks, I believe. In, uh, in, in NFS, they're called reservations. So you take a lock, you're granted the lock for a limited amount of time. After, the, the time, after that time elapses, the lock is, is either automatically released or the application requests a new lease on that lock. And we do this through Gluster's up call mechanism. Um, we also have, we're, it's not there yet, it's coming in the next version. We have the ability for PNF clients that are using PNFS to be able to um, re retrieve uh, PNFS layouts and that's all done through the, uh, through the lease mechanism. We've overloaded the lease mechanism. So what are we shipping today? In Fedora 22, we've got Ganesha 2.2 and it's accompanying RPC library are bundled. If, if you're in the Fedora community and you see the word bundled, immediately bells and whistles and flags go off and everybody gets upset. We were granted a, uh, a, uh, a bundling exception through Fedora 23. We, we actually beat that, but um, in Fedora 23 now we're shipping uh, Ganesha 2.3 and uh, the unbundled version of the, of the library. If you're actively, you know, if you're interested in using, we've got a new version in the pipeline. It's, it's in uh, the testing repo right now. We have it, it's available in Apple. It's available in the CentOS storage SIG. If you're, you know, the whole world isn't just Fedora, CentOS, and RHEL. So um, um, we, we are providing community binaries to other distributions. Um, how am I doing on time? Seems like I might be going really fast. That's all right, we'll slow down when we get to the demo. Any questions so far? No, okay. Uh, we're not sitting still. Upstream, upstream Ganesha continues to drive forward. Um, uh, 2.3.0 was released a couple months ago. Features in it included things like, uh, that was primarily focused around being a stability and performance improvement. Release. We got the we got TIRPC, the new TIRPC, unbundled. We got ACLs 
We've got uh, the upcall infrastructure. Uh, we've put some performance improvements in our, in our implementation of our FASAL. Uh, there's multiple data server support. The, the, this is the things like the lock, rec, rec, lock reclamation. Uh, and so on. Uh, currently, we're actively working on Ganesha 2.4. That will probably get released shortly before Fedora 24 ships. So we hope to have Ganesha 2.4 in uh, Fedora 24. The Fasal interface is being revamped. We're doing more performance work. We've got a new version of the RPC library. We're trying very hard to get rich ACL support into it. A lot of that, a lot of what's holding that up, actually, uh, is not not just uh, or, or there's a lot of reasons. Some of it's in Samba, some of it's in the kernel, some of it's in some of the kernel file systems, and hopefully this all gets resolved and we can have rich ACL support along with everybody else. Uh, that's over on the Ganesha side. What we're doing in Gluster to accommodate a lot of that, we have work ongoing between our Samba team, who are, half of which are sitting right here, uh, and our, our Gluster team in Bangalore and elsewhere, who are, gonna, who are working on what we call converged multi-protocol. And what that means is that you'll be able to have a single Gluster backend being fronted by a Ganesha server and a Samba server, or a Ganesha cluster and a Samba cluster, and you'll be able to modify, read, write, modify, delete files on, through NFS and through and through Samba, and the whole world will be consistent. Now, if you're trying to do that today, that that's actually a no-no. We tell you don't do that. A lot of people do it anyway, and then and then things crash and burn. And then we say, oh, well, we told you. Um, but we're looking at making this work. You know, the commercial servers, you can, they, they've, uh, somehow they've solved it or they lie, I don't know. But um, uh, we're, we're looking to make it work for real in our, in the next re with the next release of Gluster and Ganesha, the next releases of Gluster, Ganesha, and Samba. Uh, we also... Um, Part and parcel of that is that we the uh, the HA that we have now that's just for Ganesha will be expanded to encompass uh, the Samba servers as well. So any any failure there there'll be no more there'll be no single point of failure in either Samba or Gluster or Ganesha, and that will all fall in, uh, come under one roof under one implementation. And. Uh, we're getting improved, better uh, upcall and lease support, so that uh, some of the preliminary sort of uh, early early implementations of delegations and op blocks will uh, uh, get better and faster. We'll have uh, real or PNF PNFS layout recall. You'll be able to do that if you want to use PNF. You can use PNF PNFS today. It works today, but there's no there's no layout recall. Um, one of the, another thing we're getting uh, largely through work that's going on in Gluster is that we'll have X adders on NFS. Currently, no NFS implementation that I know of has the ability to set X adders. Um, so this gives us things like uh, labeled NFS, so SE Linux on your on your uh, on your NFS volumes. Uh, um, unique NFS epic. Uh, we're, we're adding, uh, yeah, question. Um, for the Linux support, the NFS uh, support of one specification, I think, which is a new attribute. What do you do about X adders? What do you have there? Um, Niels is over there grinning. Maybe I'll let him answer that. I uh, know. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, so um, there's an update to the latest NFS synopsis. So, so I just remembered I'm supposed to repeat the question, and, and then I'll also repeat the answer. Maybe, maybe I'll even repeat the answer correctly. The question is, you know, for 
is with NFS v4.1, there's, there's this part of the specification for setting X adders on NFS volumes, and the question is how, how do we handle that? And Neil's answer was, say that again. So for NFS 4.1, that is labeled NFS, which was a specific extent attribute to support SL layers. This is labeled NFS, but also extended attributes for NFS volumes. Extended attributes for NFS volumes is in addition to the latest NFS protocol. I think that is 4.3 that's coming out, or maybe 4.4 that will be coming. Um, it's currently under review, and this is a new feature for the NFS protocol. Okay. I'm not actually going to try and repeat that. <laughs> um, and of course, we're doing, you know, we're very busy fixing lots of bugs and adding new features for 3.8. Trying to go to the next slide. There is stuff ongoing in, in Ceph, too. I haven't talked a lot about Ceph, but Ceph is a, is a big part of our storage strategy here at Red Hat, and uh, there, there's, there is stuff going on. Not the most brilliant slide in the world. Beyond uh, GloucesterFS 3.8, all, all as it relates to Ganesha and, and SMB, Samba as well, we're doing more work with compound operations, so you can do, you'll be able to do things that uh, think that NFS v4 dot whatever allow. So you, uh, compound operations are things like an open and a seek, or an open and a lock, or uh, and so on. Uh, rich ACLs above and beyond the rich ACL work that we already have ongoing. Uh, more work with shared reservations for PNFS. <laughs> For the PNFS, uh, we're, we're starting to lay the groundwork now for multiple metadata servers and, um, and, the, and the layout recall that I talked about in an earlier slide. The, um, uh, originally, we were going to do some stuff for Manila, for OpenStack Manila, but I've been told that that was incorrect. And rather than delete the whole line, I just <laughs> put nope. Not going to happen. Uh, another kind of an, a sort of an example of a compound operation is a special one called server-side copy. Rather than if you know, if you want to copy gigabyte um, uh, VM images or or your um, uh, your video files, rather than download ten gigabytes across the network just to send it back. You can send it and let the server do it all server side and not use up, not burn up your network. Uh, atomic o atomic o open is another another flavor of compound operations. So things like open and share or open and lease, um, uh, open write close, all bundled up into a single op atomic operation. There are a couple little things in 4.2 we haven't that haven't been implemented yet. We're going to do those, start working on those. Um, and then the one that that scares some people, like our friends at Facebook, uh, we don't really care to maintain both the, the old legacy Gluster NFS. We call it to differentiate. We we call it GNFS or Gluster NFS, which is the uh, the legacy. NFS v3 server, we want to get rid of that and just switch to doing Ganesha for all of our NFS. So the code isn't ever going to disappear. There's plenty of legacy code sitting in Git repos and whatnot. But ultimately, we're going to start turning it off. So initially, we'll probably just say when you start a Gluster volume, you won't get, uh, it won't start the Gluster server, NFS server anymore. And then maybe in the next release, we'll, st we'll um, do more to disable it, and eventually we'll prune it all out of the out of the source tree. Any questions about that? Did I turn it off somehow? Check if it's green. Yeah, it's green. So. 
Oh. Yeah. Now it wants to work. Okay. Yes. Oh, um, well, we, it's, we have, um, that's on our roadmap to do. So as a, you know, as a flavor, um, I always get referrals and reservations twisted around in my head. But, um, uh, and now I'm having a, having a, a senior moment. Because I'm only 30 years old in base 19, but, um, uh, ask, send me an email, um, and I can tell you what, what we've got going on there. Uh, how am I doing on time? Ten. Ten, oh, so I'm uh, uh, ten minutes left? Eleven minutes. Eleven minutes. Oh. So plenty of time. So, okay. So now I'm going to show you the demo, and I'm not going to, I'm going to play a recording, and maybe I'll have to pause it, but uh, I recorded this the other day, and then I thought it would be just better to play the recording than have you watch me try and type because I can't ever really type when I'm under pressure. But, um, uh, these demos are all running on CentOS 7 VMs. Uh, the binaries that we're using are all all come straight from uh, the CentOS storage SIG that Niels uh, is really the does all the heavy lifting on. I'm supposed to do some of it, but um, Niels usually gets to it before I do. So. And in these demos, actually, I'm going to cheat. I'm, I'm, uh, nobody ever cheats in demos. But the way I'm going to cheat is I'm not going to bore you by showing you installing Gluster and creating volumes. There, that part's already done. And I'm going to show you three things. I'm going to, this is based on a, a blog article I wrote called Scaling, Scale Out NFS, Crawl, Walk, and Run. So the crawl demo, I'm just going to show a very simple Ganesha server serving, the, serving a regular file system export. In the walk demo, I'm going to show you this, pretty much the same thing, but it's going to be a Gluster volume. And then in the third one where we run, um, I'm going to show you a, a four-node, highly availability with pacemaker and core sync. And I'm going to show, I'm going to kill the Ganesha server and you'll see the uh, virtual IP failover uh, seamlessly, and the client will continue to read and write from the volume. So uh, bear with me for a second while I switch over to find my mouse, find my window. And I'll try and keep up, and I might have to pause. So this is the crawl demo. And um, so far, I'm able to keep up. So remember, all the software packages have already been installed. This is we're looking at the Ganesha export. You can see the path we're going to export. We use the XFS Fasal to export that particular path. I'm going to start the Ganesha server. Then I'm going to watch the Ganesha log and um, wait and see for it to come out of grace. Certain, certain FOPs in NFS are blocked by during the grace period. So there are a number of things that will put an NFS server into grace, it, when, it, when it starts like this, it's actually sort of unnecessary, but it's the way Ganesha is, so we kind of have to live with it. And the default grace period is, is fairly short. It's about 60 seconds. So we'll, uh, we'll all sit here and, and, and watch for it to come out of grace. For There's a TV show in America called Jeopardy, and I would whistle the music that they play while they're waiting for the answer. But so if you if you know if you know the Jeopardy show, the game show in America, you can just whistle this along in your head. Came out of grace. So now we're going to mount the volume, mount the mount the NFS export. We 
which if you remember, this was the, the path that was specified in the, in the config file. And I'll show you that it's mounted. And for good measure, I'll show you that it, see, it's in the NFS4 mount. We didn't accident, somehow accidentally get NFS v3. We'll do a couple file operations, and we'll tear it down. I was worried that this was going to run faster than I could talk. So now we're going to switch to another virtual machine, and we're going to do the walk demo. This is going to look amazingly like the one you just saw, so I apologize if you're bored. But what is different is I'm going to start the Gluster volume. I've already got a Gluster volume set up. Yeah, I should be able to make five minutes. I'm going to start the Gluster volume. The Gluster volume started. I'm going to show you the config file again. I'll show you what's different here this time is that this is the path, the path that the clients will use to, to reference the export, but we're using a Gluster Fasal to export at this time. So there is, no, there is no actual path anywhere in the file system called slash walk on this server. It's purely kind of a virtual path that's provided by the Gluster server. So now we have to wait for Grace again, and you can, you can sort of hum along with the Jeopardy theme in your mind. And if you don't know the Jeopardy theme, then you have your homework will be to go look it up on YouTube. And somebody playing it for us? I don't know, maybe five minutes isn't enough if I have to wait, wait for the Jeopardy music. Okay, we can. So, oops. <laughs> so it emerged from Grace. So we mount the volume, and I won't, let's, let's skip ahead because you've seen this. Because what I really want to show you, let's see, did I skip too far ahead? No. This is now a four volume, two by two, distribute plus replica volume, running on four different, across four different nodes. And I'll just briefly show you the config file. So this is actually the default as we move ahead. I'll just show you briefly what, what the HA config setup looks like. So we have a, a cluster name. There's a server that's just used for shared state across the cluster. These are all the, the names of the nodes that are participating in the cluster. And these are the four virtual IP addresses. Four virtual IP addresses that each of those nodes will be assigned by Pacemaker. And let's jump ahead. Come on. Come on, fingers. So I used the Gluster CLI to, uh, to export the file, to, to create the uh, export. And we've, um, what's going on?
Ah. Uh. So. Okay, so what a, the important thing here is that the vir one virtual IP, the first virtual IP is on node one. The second, the second virtual IP is on node two. Third virtual IP is on node three, and so on. Let's jump ahead. So we've now mounted this volume. So I've got one minute left, I think. But I'm also the last presentation. So again, you can just proving that it's really mounted. It's an FS4 mount. Now what's gonna now I'm gonna show you. Uh, I'm going to switch to another window here in a moment, and I'm going to kill the Ganesha server. And then we'll come back to this window. And now you can see that Virtual IP1 is running on node 1. Virtual IP2 has moved over to node 1. And uh, as soon as it, we'll come back down here and we'll see that. Let's jump ahead. Unless it starts typing. Oh, we're going to wait for it to come out of grace. It came out of grace. I think recording this was a brilliant move because I can fast forward <laughs> faster than. So here, here I'm going to write a file again to because I'm this is this client has mounted from the virtual IP. The virtual IP moved as a client. I have the client never has no idea, no notion that anything failed, and I continue to write unmount. And that's pretty much the end of the demo. So I'm a minute over time, and um, this is just tearing, tearing down and unexporting the volume and shutting everything down. That's normal. We expected to see that. And uh, let's, let's wrap with that. Uh, So I didn't see anybody fall asleep with my um, sleep-inducing voice. And come on, where are you? Come back. Oh, there we go. So Hogana is Canada, which is for Let's Go. So. What I, you know, hopefully I've encouraged you all to, or to believe that, uh, or to see that, that this is uh, exciting technology and we're doing lots of stuff and you'll all give it a try. Um, thank you everyone and... Um